Welcome, Disciple Makers. So glad to be with you today. Scott Sullivan here, Discipleship Catalyst at the Georgia Baptist Mission Board, and I'm joined today by Chris Surratt. So good to have Chris with us, and you guys will, uh, many of you already know Chris. You've used his curriculum. You have uh, resourced with him. He is our discipleship and small group specialist at Lifeway Christian Resource. And I've been doing that for a number of number of years and really grateful that Chris took some time to be with us today. And he's dropped a blog that we'll be putting in the comments so you can access that. It's also at gabaptist.org forward slash discipleship. That's our website, uh, which you can get all of our resources and, uh, and keep to, up to date on the different blogs that we're putting out every week. <clears throat> and guys, you, you all know that uh, we do this every Thursday right now at three o'clock and uh, love for you to continue to be there. And if you also do a couple of things, one, if you'll share this to your personal page, just help us to get an exponential effect of being able to get this out because this is really, really good, really strong, and we want as many people as possible, all right? Also, we need to know where you're watching from. So if you'll go ahead and drop that in the comments below, as we do every week, we're gonna be giving away some free swag. One of the things we're gonna give away is this super awesome, super special, incredible book uh, for a limited time only, not really, by Chris Surratt. This is his uh, latest, he's authored uh, several books, but his latest book um, called Leading Small Groups. So you wanna make sure that you get this. And um, you know, Chris, one of the questions I get sometimes is, because it says leading small groups, and people look at that and they say, well, you know, we've got life groups, or we've got you know, journey groups or D groups, or we have Sunday school. And they said, well, that probably, that book's not for me. But when I read this book, there's something in here for everybody. Would you agree with that? I would agree. Thanks, Scott, for being so nice uh, about the book. Coming up with a term that goes across all churches, denominations, uh, different types of groups is a little, little difficult. So I think we can all agree what we do usually is a smaller group that meets outside of the Sunday morning service. So if that is what you're involved in, whether you call it a, a life group, small group, Sunday school group, whatever it is, uh, that book in that, the terminology in the book applies to your group. Awesome, very good. And like I said, we'll be giving this away. So make sure if you guys and ladies that are joining us just now, make sure that you put your, uh, I guess your name, where you're watching from in the comments. And Lana, my assistant's gonna be tracking through there and then as we give a couple of days for people to get on here, we typically have about, Chris, probably between 1,000 and 1,200 views weekly on there. Uh, so we'll give it a few days there. She'll draw a name from the comments, and then we'll send out a pile of resources. And one of those will be the Leading Small Groups book. All right. So let's jump in here. Chris, again, thanks for being with us, buddy. Uh, you sure. are just a wealth of wisdom. And uh, you were telling me you've been there at Lifeway for five years but you've got a couple of decades of experience, right? Uh, local church, real world experience. I do. I was uh, on staff full time at a couple churches for about 24, 25 years, which um, uh, I don't feel like I'm that old, Scott, but um, yeah, I guess I am at this point. But yeah, doing local ministry, I've done a lot of things in church life, but what I've enjoyed the most is being directly over discipleship in groups because I feel like, you know, that's where real lasting life change happens and where we're able to disciple people the best is in smaller groups. And so I've, I've done that for several years and still uh, volunteer as a small group leader in my church. And I couldn't imagine my life without a small group of people uh, coming alongside me. I love it. I love to hear that you're not just talking about it and writing it, that you're doing it. That is where we've got to be, bro. I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. Well, let me throw a couple of questions at you this morning, because uh, in your blog, you mentioned that um, some good things that could come out of the COVID-19 experience for many of our churches. Can you expound on that? Yeah, and that's, it sounds um, weird right now to say good things can come out of this uh, pandemic, but, you know, God works through everything. And I think this is really a reset button for a lot of churches. I know that I've talked to a lot of churches and, and they've taken a hard look now at everything that they offer. You know, as we, as we kind of get older in churches and as we go along, we start to add things, we add programs, we add ministries, we add events. And then 
before we know it, we have over-programmed our church. We've programmed out discipleship. And so I think what this has caused a lot of churches to do is to take a hard look at everything that we offer. All of the events, I mean, pretty much for every church, events went away. I mean, just overnight, we couldn't do events anymore. Some churches are starting to bring them back a little bit, depending on what part of the country that you're in. But for instance, I was just out in California a few weeks ago, training some leaders at a church, and they were a big event church. I mean, just everything was centered on events, and that all went away. They don't know when it's going to come back. They can't even meet together as a church indoors, probably till next year or maybe even 2022. So they decided, you know what, instead of events, we need to do small groups. And they had never really done small groups. They had had some pockets of groups, but they decided since we can't do events, we need to, need to do small groups. So they invited myself and they uh, did some curriculum with us and they are going all in on small groups because anywhere that you are, you can still do small groups. You may have to do them online. You may have to do them outside. For instance, my uh, D group right now that I'm leading with a couple other guys, we meet outside uh, every week. I don't know what we're going to do when it gets cold in Nashville. Maybe we'll bring our own little space heaters, but they're getting creative. And that's what I'm seeing from churches is they're, they're re-examining and deciding, okay, we know that we are called to disciple people in our care. Right. What can we not do right now, but what can we do? So we can do small groups. We can't do the events, but we can do smaller groups meeting online or outside. And so I really do think on the other side of this, Scott, that churches are going to come out of it with um, a fresh vision and a new look at how we disciple people because we have to do it right now. That's a great lead into my second question, Chris, because I've, I've spoken several times on this broadcast um, about the weakness that many churches have experienced in the last seven months, particularly those churches who have almost solely put the health and strength and um, emphasis of their church on the larger group of assembly on what we do. And, mm -hmm. and just so you know, from our perspective, we just launched the, what I call the watershed principle. That book just came out. Um, and, and we emphasize a balance where we celebrate the large group, but we also say, listen, you got to get people into the small group and even maybe that smaller group and then emphasize the one-on-one. -on -one. But I love what you put in your article because you wrote making groups a priority everywhere. And you talk about how we say we want I, mean, I love this part right here. I love this. It said, we, we say we want groups to be a priority, but it's buried three clicks down into our website. So if you really wanted to see it, you've got to be persistent enough to keep clicking and to even know where to go to even get to the small groups information, registration, and to get more stuff. Can you expand on that? Sure. Um, one of the things that I, I think has happened, and this is not a bad thing at all, is the uh, kind of assimilation discipleship funnel that most churches have has been flipped over. You know, before all of this, our funnel was kind of the big side where we would catch the most people, and that would be a Sunday morning worship event, that would be a men's event that would be a women's event and so okay and it made sense because that's where we could get the most people into the funnel and so what would happen is we would use that big net we could we could bring people into our sunday morning service and then kind of get them down and maybe connect them into serving uh into groups and then send them out from there and so the funnel kind of looked like this well, I think what's exciting is that funnel is actually being flipped over. And we're seeing that in our group where the Sunday morning is not the big part of it. Groups, smaller groups are actually the first step for a lot of people getting connected into church life, especially if you've not been able to meet uh, physically. People are going to come online. That's where they're going to first see your church. And so I've talked about for a long time how your website is, uh, you know, really the front door of the church nowadays. You know, that's where people visit. Statistics show that people will visit a website of a church like 10 times before they attend on a Sunday. So that's how they get acquainted with the church. Well, now it's not only the front door, but it's the lobby. And for a lot of churches, it's the platform, it's the stage, it's everything. And so if we want people to get connected, if we still believe 
that smaller groups are where people are discipled, where people are taken care of best in our church, then we have to make it easy and obvious. And it starts with our website. So if I visit your, your church website and uh, I go to it and it takes me, you know, two, three, four clicks. Like I went to one recently, they had contacted me and they said, you know what, we want groups to be more of a focal point of our, our um, evangelism. We want groups to be a big part of who we are. And so I went to just find out how I could join a group and I got lost. I mean, I was clicking down subgroups. I hit adults. I hit um, connect me now. I, you know, I yelled at it and said service person, you know, like we do when we calls and we, we just want to talk to somebody. It was really frustrating. And so if that's somebody trying to get connected, then it's going to be really tough for that to happen. And so I just want to encourage you, if you can, make groups one of the first options on your website, because that's where they're coming to check out your church. They want to see what's going on. And so, hey, if I want to get connected, well, I can do that right here. And especially if you have online groups, and I know most churches have at least experimented with online groups through all of this, and we've seen how online groups can work. And, uh, you know, I don't know that I was a big believer, uh, honestly, Scott, nine months ago, but I am now. Our group met online for several weeks. And so, it's easier now than ever to join a group. So just make it easy, obvious, put it on the front page of your website, make it one click and the big part of the funnel groups can be just the easiest way to get connected into the church life at your, at your church. That's great, Chris. And, and when we think about what's happening in our online uh, worship services. A lot of people have been checking that success box, you know, it's, hey, we've had hundreds more people engaging through there. One of the things we've been encouraging people to do, which really targets what you're talking about, is even when you're getting people into those worship services and they're viewing online, is trying to drop into the comments a way that they can engage personally in a small group or where they can get contact or where on your website, just drop the link so they can get there, man. So good. Love that you added that. Well, let me jump to a third question here. You mentioned about refreshing curriculum. Now, this particular broadcast isn't necessarily focused on the church who only has the, the worship service and they're not doing any small group. This is really talking about how do we refresh what we're doing in our small group Bible study? How do we get them going again? And you mentioned about refreshing curriculum, the mm -hmm. printed and online. You share, some, share what you mean about um, that idea about refreshing the curriculum that they're using. Yeah, I mean, just like this is a reset time for our church, this is also a refresh time for our church, especially when it comes to groups. So let me use my group as an example. Um, when we started out with what are we going to do next in March, everything had shut down. We couldn't meet together physically. Um, we have some members in our group that are uh, over 60, have had some health issues. And so meeting together was definitely not um, uh, something that they could do right now, even to this day, they, they can't do that. And so we had to figure out, okay, now we've got to jump online. So we did that. So we jumped on to Zoom. You know, it's kind of funny when we did Zoom, we had 100% attendance. And we never have 100% attendance. I mean, we've got about 16 ish in our group. And normally, we'll have about 10 or 12 that come on a Tuesday night to our group. Well, we had 16 for two or three weeks in a row. But what happened, what I noticed uh, was that we really just wanted to catch up. We wanted to see how everybody's doing, you know, pray for each other. And so we would spend most of our meetings just kind of talking, fellowshipping, just praying for one another, but we never got to studying the Bible. And really that's that's and all of us would agree that's an essential part of a small group. Now it was important that we connected together, that we prayed for each other, but we weren't digging into God's word. And I've seen that as I've talked to churches across the country that you know they their groups have maybe gotten back together, but it's really about just connecting. It's about fellowshipping, and and the Bible study is difficult. And and I, and I agree. So we tried to do. A, just a regular study through our Zoom group. And it's just different. 
you know, if you've done a group like this, it's just, it's more difficult. It's harder to use just a printed curriculum and kind of make it transfer. Or if you watch a video, it takes a lot of time and it's all of the technology is just really hard. And so I can guarantee that your groups are going through some of that as they try to figure out what's next for them, whether they're meeting in a park or they're meeting online or they're meeting back in a classroom. And so I just wanna encourage you to take a fresh look. You know, whatever curriculum that you're using, one, are you using curriculum? Are your groups studying the Bible? If they're not, let's start there. We wanna encourage groups to study the Bible. And then how is it working for your online group or your group that's meeting outside? Um, do we need to change up the questions a little bit? Do we need to look at maybe a digital version of curriculum? And what's kind of cool is LifeWay is now taking all of the ongoing curriculum, which is what a lot, of, a lot of churches use, especially if you meet on Sunday morning, and they've made it digital. So if you go to uh, curriculum.lifeway.com, you can get Bible Studies for Life, Gospel Project, uh, Explore the Bible. You can get all of that digitally now. So your online groups or groups that just want to get it online and then print it out, it's so much easier. Or you can use a tool like smallgroup.com, which is what my group uses. So I can just put in a topic and it spits out verses and questions and it's really simple to use. But this is just a good time to say, We've got a refresh on everything else. We should take a look again at our curriculum. Make sure our groups are studying the Bible. They're not just getting together to hang out, but they're studying the Bible. And then are we resourcing them in a way that is useful for their medium that they're using right now, whether it's online or outside, but just take a fresh look at your curriculum. I love it because I, I would just, one of my concerns, Chris, is that we, many of our churches are sitting back and they're waiting on these waves of change to hit. And then with the idea of, hey, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm trying to share with churches is stay ahead of that. You know that change is coming, change is already here. So refresh your curriculum, refocus your small group emphasis, uh, be aware of what your website looks like. So, I mean, you've just dropped some really good uh, nuggets for our people to do well in, uh, in moving forward in their small group and in their disciple making ministry. Well, one last question I want to throw out to you because we'll have, man, over a thousand leaders, pastors that'll be watching what you're talking about and, and reading this blog that we're going to be putting in the chats. Um, so tell us why it's important for leaders to lead well during this time. Sure. And I know this is a really difficult time for church leaders. I mean, I, I talk to my pastor and I say, man, I'm praying for you and I'm glad I'm not you right now, to be honest, because I don't know of a, a harder time to be a church leader than what we're going through right now. Not just the pandemic, but the tension that's just in this country through the political time that we're in and racial tensions. And it's just hard. And so the first thing that I want to say to you is take care of yourself lead yourself well. You know, I'm, Scott, I met with a pastor just a few weeks ago, and he was very frustrated, very down. Um, they had reopened services, and people weren't really coming back yet, and it was just, he was, he was really depressed, and what I was able to, to tell him was, what you have to do is take care of yourself and make sure that you're pursuing Jesus first, mm -hmm. because that, at the end of the day, it, it is what matters. If you're not pursuing Jesus, then the church is not going to ever be healthy. Your family is never going to be healthy. And at the end of all of this, that is what is important. So I just want to encourage you as a church leader, if you're out there, pursue Jesus, take care of yourself, be in a small group yourself, because that's where right now I get life is from my D group. When I sit down with my uh, couple guys and just say, this is what's going on in my life. And we we're going through the book of James right now and getting a lot of encouragement from that. And so I want to encourage you, if you're not in a small group, if you're not in a D group, then get in one because you need it now more than ever. And that's going to allow you to lead others in a, in a stronger, better way um, through all of this. So take care of yourself, 
um, get with other people that can pray for you, that can hold your hands up, and then you're going to be able to lead the people around you through whatever's coming. And I've got a friend, you know, we always say, what's the, what's the new normal or let's get back to normal. And my friend calls it the next normal, whatever the next normal is, because every week has another challenge. And if we're not, um, taking care of ourselves, if we're not doing the spiritual disciplines, if we're not in the word, if we're not praying, if we don't have a small group around us to uh, take care of us, then we're not going to be ready to lead through whatever that next normal is. Man, that is so good, Chris. So good. And, you know, that idea of taking care of ourselves, the most foundational thing we can do, because we talk about strategies and we talk about pathways and all that. But I agree with you, buddy. The, the most foundational thing we can do is take care of ourselves and spend time daily with the Lord. You know, that encouragement, that strength, that inner, that uh, it's got to be there as we navigate these waters. So, man, thank you so much for being on with us today. I want to say a thank you to Kenneth Acock. Kenneth is our uh, discipleship consultant in the northeast region of Georgia. So he's our show producer for today in the background. So, Kenneth, thank you for doing that. And, um, and friends, I just want to encourage you because there was one thing that Chris mentioned about taking care of yourself, but he mentioned about connecting with other people. So the, the professional resourcing that comes, the encouragement that can come when you're connected. We are launching what we call learning communities. Chris, we haven't, you and I haven't talked much about this, but we have six regions in Georgia and we've, we're trying to get four to six of these learning communities in every region so that every leader, no matter where they live in the state of Georgia, can connect with these learning communities that meet monthly, that can meet every every other month or even once a quarter. They have the, the option to work through our consultant and, and choose how those are going to meet. But that's what they're for. You know, one of my deals is, man, I want to finish strong. You know, I feel like I've got a good, solid, heavy 20 years of just vibrant ministry left. And I want my wife to still know that that I love her and that she loves me when we get we go through this whole time of ministry, that my kids still think I'm a hero at the end of it, but I didn't fail them. And uh, these learning communities are part of what we're doing in Georgia. So friends, if you uh, would like to know more about the learning community, uh, you can go to gabaptist.org forward slash discipleship. Just scroll down, hit that um, learning community button, and it'll give you an opportunity to send a request and we'll connect you with one there. So Chris, thank you again, buddy. Uh, we're going to close out our time here. And friends, those of you who are watching, make sure that you are putting where you're watching from, because we are going to be giving away some free product uh, here in the next couple of days based on the chats. And uh, as we always say, make sure that you reinvest the gospel seed that was shared with you. Let's go make disciple makers that change the world.